User Types Episode 2, your first Snap app. In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating an empty Haskell program and turning it into a very basic Snap application from scratch. Snap is a web development framework for Haskell, it allows you to build web apps and REST APIs. Let's fire up a terminal, maximize, we'll go to our source directory, it's nice and empty. We're going to use the stack new command. We'll call our project snap-hello-world. We use the simple template. And as we've used before, I'm going to use the LTS 12.0 resolver. Here we get this warning about the missing category section in your stack config file, templates, params, category. Uh, doesn't really matter. You can override that using the command line argument. Um, the default value it's chose, I'm sure, will be fine. Let's go and check it out. Let's go into project directory. There's our program. If we cat the cabal file, we'll see it's chosen category web, build type simple, both of which are perfectly fine. It's populated with my name, email address from my config.yaml as well. Let's init git here. Since we're going to be writing some code, we want some history. We've we'll got to track our changes. There we go, there's our dot git file. We're going to ignore the dot stack dash work directory that stack will generate. We'll do that by adding slash dot stack dash work slash to the end of our git ignore file. We'll create it from scratch if it doesn't already exist. There we go. We'll add these files. Let's do a quick build to make sure everything is happy. Great. It's created snap-hello-world in the bin directory. We'll run that just to make sure it all looks good. Great. Hello world. We're going to start a build loop now. So previously we did stack build minus minus fast up here. Uh, this builds a project minus minus fast bypasses optimizations, so it compiles the code more quickly. And this is this cool little switch minus minus file minus watch, which will build the program and wait in a loop for changes to any of the dependencies, the files in the project. So it's going to sit there waiting for changes. It says exit success. The program did not need rebuilding type help for available commands. You can force a rebuild by pressing enter. It will rebuild it. Let's open up an editor. So I'm going to open up a new tab in my terminal with control shift T. There we go. We'll open up VS code in this directory. Here we go. I'm going to go to the cabal file. So here we see the name of the project, the version, git repository, various pieces of metadata regarding the project. And down here, we've got the build depends section under executable snap-hello-world. This lists the Haskell packages that your executable target depends on. And these are typically obtained from hackage via stackage. So we are going to add a dependency on snap core and snap server just to create the simplest snap application we can think of. Do control S to save. We'll go back to our terminal and we'll see that stack has picked up the change to the cabal file and it is busily downloading the dependencies. There we go, snap-hello-world's built. The first time you run this, it might take a little while, maybe, I don't know, five to 10 minutes since there are about 31 packages that snap core, snap server bring in. Let's kill that and we're going to open up this stack build fast file watch loop directly in VS Code, which will make iterating much easier. So here we are back in Visual Studio Code. I'm also going to move the key monitoring overlay up here. And we'll go to View, Integrated Terminal will open up in the project directory by default and we're going to run 
stack build minus minus fast minus minus file minus watch in that terminal instead so we can watch it side by side with our code. So now we have a simple stack app. Doesn't really do much apart from say hello world. Let's see if we can get it to write hello world to a browser. Let's open up our source file currently just as put str learn hello world. Oh, here we go. This is intero is not installed. Let's fix that since we're here so we can get some context sensitive help. So let's close VS code down, go back here. We do stack build intero. Open up our integrated terminal again. Just to prove the point that our program just says hello world, which I've done before. We'll do it one more time. There we go. So, start our build loop. We're going to make a few changes to our program. First and foremost, we're going to use the overloaded strings language extension. In some later video, I hope that we'll talk more about Haskell language extensions. For the time being, I'll just mention that this is a useful extension which allows you to use double quoted string literals for various other string types other than the built-in string it's in the prelude so we'll enable that language extension we'll change our module to export only the main function and we're going to make a couple of changes to import from snap at the same time i'm also going to change the number of spaces in my that vs code uses for tabs like so and I'll say import snap core. We're going to import the if top and write text functions. And then from snap HTTP server, we'll import quick HTTP serve. And pretty much the simplest snap program you can write looks something like this. Delete that body. I'm going to use quick HTTP serve. This function we imported above on line six. And we're going to apply that function to if top write text hello world and save. Look at that. Our program is building. Let's control C and run our program. So we're going to execute snap hello world. And we get a bunch of stuff here, some warnings about a missing log directory. We'll address that a little bit later. But the important stuff to see here is it says no port specified, defaulting to port 8000 and listening on HTTP colon slash slash 0.0.0.0, .0, colon 8000. So let's open up a web browser and go to localhost port 8000. HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8000. Hello world. That is our basic application. Let's go back to VS Code and we'll see it's logged some Apache style messages to the terminal to say it's received a get with the path slash, which corresponds to that if top. 
and it's also had a request for favicon.ico from the web browser. So very briefly, let's look at our program. Quick HTTP serve is a function which yields an action, IO unit, and this just uh, serves HTTP using some sensible defaults, in this case port 8000, logging to the log directory, etc. And then this takes as an argument, let me see what does it say, a snap action, so snap unit. Uh, and in this case we've just found a very, the very simplest routing that I can think of, which is to use the if top function, which matches the slash root here. And then the action that it performs if that root is matched is to write text hello world. And the write text function takes data.text.internal.text and yields a snap unit action. And this is why we need the overloaded strings language extensions to, to allow us to pass this string literal, have it converted to, us, to a text value for us. And that's pretty much the simplest possible website in about five lines of Haskell. Let's try another URL. Let's try going here and typing slash foo.html at the end. And now we get an error message, no handler accepted slash foo.html. That demonstrates or shows you that this root only handles the top level slash root. And in fact, we can see in the log output, get slash foo.html returns a 404 error. Now let's go back and address the warning we see here about the log directory. So let's kill our server. Look at what we have in our source directory. What we're going to do is create that log directory. So mukder log. And we're going to create a .heap file in it just to keep it around when you check out a new branch using git. And we're going to add that file to git. We're also going to tell git to ignore anything else that's in the log directory by adding that line to our git ignore file. Let's see what git ignore looks like. There, so we're ignoring dot stack dash work and slash log slash. Add all those files to Git. You see our project has the Git ignore license readme setup, the log directory, just the dot keep file, the cabal file, our main.hs and the stack.yaml. Now if we run snap dash hello dash world again, those warnings have gone away. Go back to our browser, navigate to bar.html, again, another error. We'll go here and we'll go to the root just to check that hello world comes up. There we go. So there we go. Now you'll see it's not logging anything to standard out, it's instead logging to files in the log directory. So we'll kill the server, go into the log directory, and you can see access.log and error.log. So there are all the accesses, the bar.html and the slash that we mm -hmm. did in the browser. Error log is empty, there are no errors, that's great. Now, let's make a couple of small changes to our program. Let's make it handle all routes and write hello world to the terminal. This is a very simple change. We're no longer going to use the if top function, so let's just delete that from our import list and remove it from here and just have it always write text hello world. We'll save that. So now we'll build our project. I'm going to show you another variant of that command. So we did stack build fast. You can also do minus minus exec. And this will take a command to run once the build has completed successfully. So it rebuilds our program and runs the server listening on port 8000. Now let's go back to the browser and check the 
root root, so to speak. That gives us hello world. And foo.html gives us hello world as well. And bar gives us hello world. So it's now returning hello world for all roots. And again, you could look in the access log in the log directory to confirm that. Now let's try another variant. We want to respond to the root root, so the top level root with one string and yield something else for everything else. So that would look something like this. I'm going to use if top again. And we're going to use alternation. So in the control applicative module, there's a function. It's the pipe, less than pipe, greater than, which is used for specifying alternation between alternative paths that we'll serve. I'm going to change our code here to say if top then write hello world otherwise using this alternate function we're going to write bad path and save go to the terminal here control c shut it down and rebuild and rerun mm -hmm. so let's see what we get now so bar yields bad path, as does foo, as does anything else, flibble. And if we remove this and just go to the root, we get hello world. So I'm going to show you one last thing to build on that, and that is responding to named roots. So we'll go back to our editor. And we're going to import an additional function named root from the snap.core module and we're going to add another alternative using the alternation operator using the root function and root takes a list of pairs of strings and actions so the list like that and the string I think it might be a byte string, I'm not sure, we'll figure that out in due course, is the root that is matched. And then the other part of the pair is the action that's performed. So this defines now a server which will write hello world for the top level root, will write ping for the slash ping root, and then bad path for anything else. Let's try that and see that it works. Great, let's go back to our browser. We'll refresh, hello world, foo.html, which yields bad path. Let's try our new route, ping. There we go, ping. And with that, we've created our first Snap app, which responds to three different URLs. You can build it, run it, and test it in your browser.